The other thing I just wanted to throw your way, I sort of referenced Fedor Emelianenko near the top of the show, and he was omnipresent in our early coverage of mixed martial arts when Kenny and I were on MMA Live at ESPN in 2008. And I have always put that guy on a pedestal, and I know he didn't fight in the UFC, but when you look at all the legends that came out for him last night, you were embedded in this sport back then. Yeah. How do you best quantify Fedor's legacy and his greatness? Uh, look, for, first of all, let me just say, uh, I, I did. I tell you, I watched that fight too, which, you know, like we had that discussion, not wanting to see guys go out like that. But the fact that they had all like Coleman and all the guys in the ring, you could see that Fedor was sincerely touched. I thought they did a great job on, on that end of it. You know, just I, he looks around and like, again, I, you could see that just the, the human side, whereas when he was coming up, he was more like a, just a stone cold killer. Uh, those piercing blue eyes, uh, heavy handed, uh, was taking care of business with everybody. I don't, I don't like when he started losing a little bit, you know, and he kept going. I, I never liked that. Uh, Cause he's another guy that if he would have stopped at the right time, I think that would have just magnified his legacy. So the fact that he never got the fight in the UFC, which was always the biggest show around, I think is, I, I think it speaks volumes to him because he's still known throughout the world. So he didn't need that platform. And I think that like, again, I think that speaks volumes that that's how good and how dominating he was at one time. And yeah. I think it's just everything. It was his, uh, his approach is, uh, like again, his his quietness, you know. But you you knew there was like you know he was just an an animal inside. Oh. He had, you know, it was. It, it, I like the way he carried himself. He, I think he was always a gentleman. I didn't know him like I never met him or anything, but just always carried himself with class and victory and defeat. And I think that's what you want out of a champion. Yeah. And uh, I wish we would have got got. I wish we would have got to see him. You know against some of the guys in the UFC, I think that would have been better. But still, to build a legacy like that without that, I think it goes to show you who he is. And, wow, was he appreciative last night. And, again, it was – we talked about I don't, I don't like that, but for some reason, it was a good feeling to me. I got a warm, yeah. fuzzy feeling. It was nice, very, very nice. And even the guys in there, you could see, you know – a lot of legends, you know, and they all came out to support him. And I think, I think it was great. I, I, I thought um, Bellator did, Scott Coker did a great job with that. Yeah. You set it up beautifully and you set up a great visual too, especially for people who are just listening to this podcast, right? Piercing blue eyes. And then he'll just fucking maul you or knock yeah. you like, and I guess for me, just because those were my formative years, Kenny, as an MMA fan, like the the visual of Fedor in the octagon, or excuse me, God help me, um, the visual of Fedor in a cage setting, like about to fight, just always felt enormous. So um, we yeah. congratulate Fedor Emelianenko on a Hall yeah. of Fame career. And, and John, I like those guys that, you know, they're not jumping around like hyenas, right? Just go in, do your business. You're looking across the ring. The guy is expressionless. You know, there's right. yeah. nothing. You know what I mean? Like you just, it's rare that you find those guys that you look in their eyes and it's just like blank. But you know, there's right. a storm coming. You know what I mean? Like I've been eyeball to eyeball with some fucking pretty serious guys. It's a pretty shitty feeling, you know? And that's the feeling I get from TV when I'm looking at him. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And, you know, then he's got, you know, and the Russian thing is always good, right? You know, that's always, you know, like growing up and with the Cuban Missile Crisis and all that stuff, it's always was a rivalry like kind of there. And they just seemed like they were stone cold killers and he fit the part and he, he could back it up. So great career. And again, to see the human side last night was just was great for me anyway. You're muted, Ken Flo. And, and of course, if you go back a little bit more, sorry about that. Um, you know, there was Oleg Taktarov and all that stuff yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. early UFCs. But Fedor, I think, was that guy that really inspired a whole generation of Russian fighters. Right. You know, there were so many people. Sergei Spivak, right, who, who just fought this this weekend, uh, said that was one of the guys that he used to watch that inspired him to get into mixed martial arts. So, you know, uh, Fedor, uh, I think, was responsible largely for a huge contingent of fighters coming out of russia and and seeing that hey these sambo fighters can be some of the best in the world 
Yeah, no, he, uh, unequivocally. Yeah, exactly. It was really, uh, you know, like again, and he just even when he even in losing, like even last night, I mean, that was a beatdown by Beta. It really was. It was a pretty oh, big yeah. beatdown. But he just the way he took it was just it. It made it better. He took for it well. Me. He took it yeah, all right. He took yeah. it well. Yeah, you know what I mean. It made it better, and mm. I hope he's okay. I hope he really enjoys the rest of his life and i yeah. it looks like he's going to go he's got a couple of fighters he'll stick with the coaching and uh you know they had clips of him teaching you could still see he's still got the raw power but you know all that other stuff timing and awareness that just it leaves you you know what i mean so yeah. he could yeah. he could he could really couldn't find bait he was swinging for the fences but and uh, and hats off to ryan beta man it's great to see him still ki killing it you know because he's He's been out of the UFC for a while, but uh, yeah, it was it was just a great moment, I thought. And they did disclose the purses, I believe, because the fight was in California. It looked like Ryan Bader made one hundred fifty thousand, and maybe Fedor Emelianenko one hundred thousand. Now, obviously, that doesn't speak to the totality of the night. You hope for Fedor; it was at least north of half a million dollars to be competing at forty six years of age. Uh, yeah. All right, before we let you go, Ray, two other items. 